what the actual F11. When you look at the RF 600 and 800 F11 from Canon, I'm sure you have a little bit of emotional, damn it. I'm Andrew Averley, professional photographer and specialist safari guide for wildlife and landscape photography from South Africa. Today I find myself in the Greater Kruger National Park in the low felt of South Africa. I'm fortunate to call this home and over the last 18 months I've been pushing the Canon R5, R6, 100 to 400 and the RF 600 and RF 800 F11 through its paces. The reason I'm filming this review now only is now because the R7 has dropped um, I think that so many more people can join the mirrorless movement, especially in bird and wildlife photography here in South Africa. I'm based in South Africa, so most of my opinions are based on in the field wildlife and bird photography in and around the Greater Kruger and a few other destinations. The first thing I get asked is F11, is it a problem? Well, through the course of this review, I'm going to show you that F11 is not a disadvantage at all. The positives of the lens, the weight, the ease of hand holding, the image stabilizer, and obviously the cost make it an incredible tool for those getting into wildlife and bird photography to do it at an affordable and enjoyable level. I think the most important thing for me when looking at equipment reviews and lenses and cameras is actually to see what you can do with them and the results you get. So for me, I'm going to take you into the studio and I'm going to show you a selection of images that I've managed to capture with these lenses on the Canon R, R5 and R6 and uh, I'll hopefully show you that uh, it's well worth it. Hi guys, uh, welcome to the studio. Um, I'm going to run through the sample images of the Canon RF 600 and 800 F11. Uh, before I start, I um, had some questions uh, regarding the RF 100 to 400 uh, uh, review I did. I just want to clarify the images you are seeing here are basically in camera JPEGs uh, with a bit of sharpening and, um, and saturation and contrast at plus one. These are not edited, so um, please don't look at these in detail. These are showing you what uh, normal basic images can be achieved. Uh, obviously, you can do extensive editing, noise removal, and so on. So, yeah, just have a look at it from that respect. This is also not a prime lens. This is a budget Canon lens. So, I'm not comparing it to any of the EF primes or the uh, RF primes. This is a image session of achievable images for people who don't have the budget or people that are traveling and would like to add a longer focal length. So let's get going. So here we have one of the images. You can have a look at the information up on the left hand side, all of the settings. This is a Montague's Harrier in the Kruger National Park. So nice detail on this, smaller JPEG. Um, yeah, we have a um, beautiful Letama Fuzzy. This is a green wood hoopoe um, taken in very rainy, wet conditions. Uh, yeah, we have a leopard beautifully um, taken uh, in the Kruger. I could stand far further away than the normal cars and still get a great shot. So you can have a look. Yeah, a little bit of noise at ISO 16000. But again, as I said, this can be... Um, edited properly and noise has never been an issue for me. Um, yeah, we have a hornbill, also taken in the rain, high ISO again, but a nice shot. Again, very skittish bird, so the focal length kept me far enough away to be able to get uh, a nice image. Yeah, we have a um, saddle bull stalk, it was flying towards me, so people have asked, okay, how does it track, is it slow? Um, this is a series of about 70 images, I think three or four are out of focus. And you can also see the brilliant bouquet and the detail in this is, is just something spectacular. Also used it for a little bit of macro. Um, this is also in the Kruger National Park, uh, or sorry, the Greater Kruger. And um, yeah, just uh, sat still for a moment or two, managed to grab a shot. Also available for a little bit of long focal length macro. 
our fork tail drongo also a nice full frame shot at 800 millimeters uh, nice bouquet again um, yeah I, i'm very happy with this detailed shot of a african lion you can see nice and crisp and sharp at uh, 1200 uh, or a thousand one over 2000 f11 iso 6400 still a great image using a good steady monopod on my vehicle um, i managed to get this really good sharp image also um, opportunities to identify birds that are a bit farther away also animal and environment bird and environment this is an endangered martial eagle um, so yeah i like this type of shot and again i uh, wouldn't have been achievable without the 800 and cropping severely this is a um, sazu the red billed hornbill or the flying chili for those that come to south africa really nice shot meant to show you the bouquet um, beautiful creamy background uh, lovely bird photograph parrot brown-headed parrot from uh, greater kruger this was actually sitting next to us at our breakfast table at a lodge and um, I've always wanted a nice shot and managed to get this close up. Again, we quickly zoom in, have the detail, you can see, very, very good, even at ISO 6400. If you uh, have a problem with noise, um, yeah, um, I think you need to learn how to do noise reduction. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. And yeah, we have a, a young leopard uh, from Wild Earth TV, and uh, it's also is named My Rips from the Savi Sands for those that watch Wild Earth. Nice gray detail, also depth of field. At F11, I managed to keep uh, the face all in focus, but you can see here this ear is slowly um, losing a bit of focus because it was moving, so also a little bit um, soft. Great crowned helmet shrikes, very difficult birds to photograph. They move. I've always wanted a nice photo. Managed to get this one. Um, also, um, bird in a bird on a stick. Bedbills oxpeckers. Can't always get close to them. They fly away regularly. Woodland kingfisher looking up at its nest. Uh, yeah, in the Greater Kruger in summer. Uh, we get a lot of them. I was fortunate to spend some time at this nest, but this one was really one of the nice photos for me, animal and environment. And uh, those that have been to the Greater Kruger, sometimes the leopards are not always on top of you. Uh, sometimes you need to create those environment shots. And you can see quite a lot of detail. This was across a riverbed, so very happy with that. This is a, um, I can't remember the name of this uh, lizard, a uh, large plated lizard or giant plated lizard, sorry. Um, nice detailed shot um, taken next to the vehicle. Also smaller JPEG, so I can't zoom in too much. This in Afrikaans is called a snewball. It's a um, shrike. Um, Really nice photo, very difficult to photograph. You hear them a lot in the bush, so uh, I was happy with this just to get a nice shot. So yeah, um, animals which are farther away, if you're going to a busy area or busy game park and self-driving, 800 millimeters is really nice to step away from the area and you can uh, get different shots. You don't have to be on top of the subject. Nice shot of a uh, family of clip springers. Um, very skittish animals as well. So again, stopping further away, nice bouquet, back around separation. I enjoyed this one. Lilac breasted roller. Uh, if you come to Africa, this is the go-to bird shot that you have to have. And you can have a look in flight, nice and sharp. Um, I'm very happy with it. Low light tracking um, an egret. Beautiful colors, beautiful texture, nice and sharp. And then ah, sometimes you get too close, but uh, a nice detailed shot of a young leopard. You can see the tongue, you can see all the detail. So at F11 and um, 1 800 of a second, beautiful, beautiful uh, colors, beautiful rendition. Nice egret, late afternoon sunlight, nice and sharp, good detail. Saddleable stalk, late afternoon light. 
was busy feeding and just flipped up a frog and had taken it. Uh, I love all the colors, I like the depth, and there's still enough background separation for me with the subject. Malachite kingfisher, tiny small bird that flies like a rocket, managed to get one at low level on a twig above a river. You can see the splashes and I uh, love the depth of field here. Very, very good separation. Not the most technically correct shot, uh, high ISO, low shutter speed, but a uh, southern white scops owl, uh, sorry, a southern white faced owl in the Kruger, not very common. One or two of the picnic sites have residence, but they're very high up in the tree. So this is more just a record shot and um, you know the detail is still pretty good, even at a high ISO. Baboon, nice separation just to show you wildlife is also possible. And then king of the jungle, lion, sitting through foliage early summer, nice sharp crisp detail. These are um, sand grouse and not easy to get to, they often fly away when you drive up so you can stop a little bit further. Um, very nice detail, it's a male and female. So sharp, clean, crisp. If you've been to South Africa and you know elephants, sometimes they're grumpy when they're in muth. And um, yeah, I really like this one, stop far away. I have a very excited um, family member, my wife. She doesn't like Ellie's at the best of times, so I managed to get a really nice shot walking down a road, shaking and chasing the birds. Um, yeah, I really like this image. Great depth of field, nice separation, and um, the whole front of the Ellie is sharp. Can't tell you exactly what this is. I think it's a puppet, um, but with a nice bug, also very skittish in the roads. Nice detail. Good bird photograph for me. Leopard sitting in a tree far away from everybody else and uh, a nice environment shot. Jacobin cuckoo, so summer visitor, strong wind, storm, Really like the contrast and background uh, of this image. African wild dog, very fast, quick moving. This one had stopped, nice portrait shot, managed to um, create this nice clean background. A, a long crested eagle, um, not often seen inside the greater Kruger, normally in urban areas or on the fringes. But um, yeah, I got a nice headshot, a nice portrait, nice sharp, clean detail at ISO 8000 and 1 250th. This one was handheld, so I sometimes push the envelope, handheld them uh, at 1000th of a second and more. Um, but yeah, you can drop your shutter speed and still get great quality images if you shoot from a beanbag or if you shoot from a uh, gimbal in your vehicle. Take off in the distance, saddlebull stalk. I Check the tracking of the R6 with this lens and there's over a hundred images and they're all in focus and managed to track the bird as it flew. But the nice moment, leaving the perch, beautiful, beautiful print I've done of this. I'm very happy with this image. This is a lesser spotted eagle and beautiful dark background, great separation, flying fast, lens is more than quick enough. Lioness, sitting, nice detail, separation from the road, depth of field, good wildlife. Silhouettes also, contrast detail, uh, focusing didn't have a problem with the R6. This was quite a long way away, so um, I didn't try and crop it in and uh, expose for the bird. I just created this moody environment shot, which is good for uh, focal lengths, like the 600 or 800. Little falcons and faster shutter speed. I could have frozen the male, females up on the right, but nice distance, nice background, nice sharp depth of field. Ellie train crossing the uh, river here. Broad daylight, lots of um, environmental issues because you are sub taking photos of subjects far, far away. So the F11, um, not the sharpest of images. But again, I'm sure if a little bit of post-processing can make it work. Favorite hyena shot, really, really lovely. 
bouquet is brilliant, soft background. What's not to like? Beautiful hyena. It's a hammerkop, nice depth of field, rushing water behind. Also lovely detail, nice and sharp. Bee eater. Oh man, this background, this twig, this whole composition is just rock star. Um, so also 800 millimeters does enable you to get a little bit closer without cropping. And also with these type of birds that fly regularly and are skittish, um, yeah, at a uh, nice distance. Rhino, taken in very, very low light, very, very um, isolated in the background. So you'll hear there's a common theme through these photos that I stopped further away with this focal length, even though there's a lot of environmental factors between myself and the, um, the uh, rhino, um, it still manages to get a nice, sharp, clean image. Who would have thought? Night jar, at night, with an f11 lens. Here's the proof of the pudding. Very happy with this image. Pearl spotted owl, lit. Looking straight down, this was above me in a tree. I leaned back in the vehicle and shot straight up. Lovely detail. ISO 25600 on the R6. Clean as a whistle for me. Tracking birds, sometimes you don't get the close-up shot as they fly away from you, but this is more than enough for a good ID. Chameleon, flap-necked. Again, great detail. European bee eater taking off. Fast shutter speed, froze the action, good quality. Low light, manual shot, still managed to focus with the low contrast here, but I love this image. Cameroptera, I think it is. Uh, taken very low light, very skittish little bird. And then my favorite hippo shot, lying on the barge at eye level. You can see F11, still a great shot. I say 25,000, a little tree squirrel. Not 100% sharp, but handheld. But again, I'm sure we can do some post-processing on this. Woodland Kingfisher again, nice, sharp, smooth background. Hey, a golden orb spider. So managing to get a photo uh, of these guys without getting too close. I'm not a big fan of spiders. Cloudscape, just random photo I took. Still enjoy it with the long focal length. Zebra, low light, low contrast, managed to focus on the eye without a problem. ID shots of birds I'm not sure of, nothing spectacular to write home about, but um, this is a hawk eagle and uh, I enjoyed seeing it added to my bird list. Another bee eater, white fronted I think it is, flying fast and free, good shot in focus, lovely depth of field, obviously will crop for composition. Another lovely parrot shot as they fly away a lot. This is an environment shot. Um, yeah, um, yeah, I keep saying it, I love the environment type stuff. Eland in the fever tree forest in the northern section of the Greater Kruger, the Makuleki concession, absolutely brilliant. Very skittish animals and um, you can't get there, there's a floodplain in between. So for long focal length, F11, um, great. And then I'll end off with this really cool moonshot. Um, who would have thought? Taking a photo of the uh, moon at 800 millimeters, F11, ISO 2500, 1 320th of a second. Well, I hope you found that useful. I've inspired you to get out and add the 600 and the 800 RF11 to your bag. Uh, as always, if you'd like to join me on safari in South Africa or Southern Africa, you can see all my links below. Please share this, like and subscribe. Till the next review, thanks very much guys. Stay safe and get out there and chase the light.